Well, here we are again. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. This location I'm in right here happens to be, put me just a little obscure, especially here in the face area. But this Bible is not obscure. It is in plain sight. I want people to see God first and then Brother Peter. I want you to see me from the inside out, not the outside in. Uh, when I got Jesus into my heart, I became a new creature. And the new creature that I am is to portray and to follow this book and this book alone. And it's this book right here that counts. God's Word. You need to hide it in your heart. You need to be able to open up anywhere, browse that scripture, and then preach it. I opened up this morning New Testament. Now, people have said to me, do you know any New Testament, Brother Peter? You're always in the Old Testament. Well, I love the Old Testament. And the Old Testament was given to us for an example. And then there's another word in there. If you will take the back of your concordance in your Bible and look up the word example, that is the person himself. What he did was the example. What he was was the example. I want to be an example for Jesus Christ and I want to take it from the example and end examples from the Old Testament and come up into the New Testament. In, in chapter 20 of the book of John, we find an excerpt, then Jesus, uh, to them again, talking to them, said to them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send me. I, you. Now that is the commission to every single solitary person who says, God, I am a son. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. Now every single person does that starts with a commission. We talked a little while ago about the commission Peter had. Now this is a commission to the other group of disciples. And he said, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. And unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now, by the way, in the evening, of the, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. <coughs> now, ha ha ha, isn't this ironic? Verse 19. They had the fear of the Jews, but that wasn't the purpose that Jesus had. The purpose Jesus had, he allowed them to have a fear of the Jews, so they would gather in this one place on the first day of the week. And here they are again together on the first day of the week in this room where they went, private room where they went to worship the Lord. And as they were worshiping the Lord, Jesus knew where they were. I like to look at it this way. Jesus told uh, Peter, uh, told Paul, over here this morning we were in Paul, and Jesus told Paul, he said, I got a group over there in that city, Paul. Don't worry about it. He told Jonah, I got a group over there in that city, Jonah. Don't worry about it. And he told different people at different times, I have a group over there. I have a group of people. Now this is where I look at it. God's looking down on a dark earth. The earth is the uh, unrighteousness of this earth is total darkness. The righteousness of this earth are little candles. And these little candles, God is looking down from heaven, looking for these little candles. And as he looks across this area, or the vast area of the earth, are you one of those candles? Are you lit up? I used this example with Noah. God looked across this earth. He's looking down on a totally dark earth. 
and the earth rotates every direction. And he said, is there not a man on the earth that I can find whose heart has not gone completely away from me and he has gone into total idolatry? Is there not a man I can find? And then the earth rotates one way and it rotates the other way and God's looking and pretty soon it rotates this way across this path and boom, there's a light. Wow! God said, there's a light. So he comes down to visit. And as he visits, he walks up as Noah. And he said, Noah, you have found a favor in the eyes of the Lord and you are a righteous man. And because you're here, I'm going to spare this earth. I'm going to flood it and I'm going to do away with all that are on this earth but you and your family. And I'm going to start over again with this handful. Had he not found Noah, he would have destroyed this earth at that point and started with a new earth, a new, new man, and new everything. God has that ability. He made the first one. He can definitely make the second one. If he made the first one, he definitely can make the second one. By the way, we're looking for him to do that. We're looking for him when he takes this earth and cast it into the lake of fire after the millennium and cast the devil into the bottomless pit. He said, I'm making a new earth and a new heaven and I'm going to take the new city, Jerusalem, and I'm going to put it on the end of that earth and set it on these 12 foundations and you folks are going to be my people and I'm going to make you rulers over cities and over places and over everything. I'm going to flow, put a brook flowing out of the throne and I'm going to put some trees on the side of that brook which is a tree of life which you are free to eat on a daily basis. I'm going to put leaves on that tree which are for the healing of the nations and those leaves are going to be uh, medicinal for the healing of the nations and they may, they'll be new every 30 days and this is a great saying that he says here in the book of Revelation what he's going to do. And if you look at it and read it, and he said, and you are going to possess it, and I'm going to make you leaders over there. If you, listen, are you living close enough to God right now so that if he's writing another Bible, let's say he's writing a Bible right now, for those who are going to be on the new earth, and you're going to be in the new Jerusalem and there's going to be a group on a new earth taking over and you're going to be for instance kind of like the angels are today watching over us we're going to be watching over those and if that be the case are you going to be a ruler in that city are you going to have a say in that book if he's writing the book say he's writing the book by the way he is writing the book Every single thing in your mind, in your conscience, in your life that you do is written down right here. It's written down right here. You know, a man could hypnotize you and ask you all the way, and you can remember coming out of your mother's birth canal. And that The brain is an awesome and wondrous thing. God made it, and he made it to record. Now, let's get back to where Jesus entered into a room where they were gathered. Do you gather? Do you forsake the assembling of yourself as a matter of some days? Or do you have a group that you assemble with? We read a little while ago about Peter. Jesus asked him three times, lovest thou me? What Jesus was telling him. He was telling him to make lambs. And then he was telling them to make them individually into sheep. And then he was telling them to make them into a flock and bring them together so that they could worship God collectively, which is very important. God's looking for the collective light. Each one of us is a candle, but when we gather together and you put many candles together, we become like the sun and we shine brighter over the town that we live in. And that's what we need to do. Is your church, is the place you're worshiping, is the place you're fellowshipping, is it shining brighter and brighter? Is it lighting up the area where you are from the neighbors next door, down the street, up the street, into the town, into the city?